All right, let's talk AC. Uh, a lot of our followers, uh, we got a lot of do-it-yourselfers, so I wanna give you some advice about AC systems and some do's and don'ts for those of you that are handy and thinking about working on your own AC system. So back when I started in this industry, not to date myself, but we were working on cars that had a Freon that's R12. R12 was as simple as it could get. You would take a can, you'd take a little tool, some gauges, and you would just basically fill that thing up, let it suck in some Freon until it felt cool. You had a little sight glass, you could look for bubbles. It was about as simple as it could get. Those cars made sense to service on your own. It was uh, about as easy as it could be. There was a, the margin of error was different. Early 90s to mid 90s, they moved to a Freon called R134A. Uh, every time they change Freon, it's for environmental reasons. When you get in car crashes and they leak out, uh, the Freons they change to are supposedly safer for the environment. R134 is still fairly simple. Um, if you were pretty handy, you could still work on them. But as the cars get newer and newer, the system gets more and more compact to where they take less and less Freon. I remember when I was first charging cars, uh, they were taking you know three, four pounds of Freon sometimes. Then 134, it got down to about two pounds. The new cars, some of them are taking less than one pound. So you've got your measurements got to be a lot tighter. So even though R134, a lot of people are still going to the part store buying a can of it and trying to charge it. I would say you're probably driving a car new enough, you shouldn't do it. A difference of just 0.1 to 0.2 pounds throws the whole system out of whack and it's easy to get air in them. So it really takes a machine to do it properly that would be silly to justify doing at your home garage. You know, you're not gonna go buy a $5,000 piece of machinery uh, to do a couple AC services. I buy two or three of them because I do you know, uh, five, six, seven AC jobs every single day is how I justify the equipment. So basically, if you've got a car 95 or newer, you really shouldn't be working on your AC anymore. Fast forward all the way to the newer cars. Uh, now we're on a Freon called R1234YF. Very expensive Freon, very expensive machine, very slow process. Do not touch these vehicles. Uh, it's very easy to contaminate them. Uh, they don't hold a lot of Freon. Everything has to be measured perfectly and done properly. So if you've got a, a 10 year old or newer vehicle, you're likely running the 1234YF. Uh, I don't think you can even buy it across the counter. Um, the last thing I wanna warn you guys about, uh, the part stores are still selling Freon uh, for 134A in a can, and they're selling it with uh, uh, stop leak in it. If somebody buys that stuff and puts the stop leak in the system, not only does it cause a bunch of problems, but then shops like ours cannot service your vehicle because if we hook our machinery up to that vehicle and recover that into our, into our machine, uh, we've just ruined our machine. So the first thing we're doing when cars come into our shop is we're hooking up an identifier to see what's in there. And if somebody's put some weird stuff in there, unfortunately, we have to call in a company that has special equipment to kind of to recover all that and clean the system. And you end up uh, saving yourself, say, $200 by doing the AC service yourself. And then you end up spending about $1,000 to have somebody properly clean that system out or more. So unfortunately, I love do-it-yourselfers, but if your car's... Uh, basically 95 or newer, I would strongly suggest you just pay a shop to do it properly with the machine. Please don't go buy the can, especially if it has a stop leak in it. One last thing I wanna warn you about is uh, we have here in Utah, we have a couple of big dealerships that uh, buy and repair salvage title vehicles. Uh, and I'm not against it. I got my start in this industry uh, fixing, my dad would go buy salvaged vehicles at the auction he would uh, teach me how to fix them and then would sell them. So I'm not against salvage title vehicles, but something common that we're seeing, oh gosh, probably at both of our shade tree shops uh, the last few years is these newer vehicles that take the one, two, three, four YF, the shops that are building these for the, for the dealerships, they're trying to be cost effective. So instead of putting the expensive Freon in it, 
they're buying some adapters, twisting them on, and filling a one, two, three, four YF system with R134. And it's an absolute nightmare when they come in. Uh, they'll contaminate our, our machine if we don't measure it right. Uh, we've got we to bring a company in to suck it all out. So uh, if you are getting ready to buy a uh, salvage title vehicle that is uh, 10 years old or newer, one thing I would recommend you do is when you have your shop, check it before you buy it. Have them hook an identifier up to it and make sure that uh, one of these Yahoo's hasn't uh, cut a corner to save 200, 300 bucks and filled your AC system up with 134 when it calls for 1234 YF.